Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you all are having a wonderful week and that y'all getting ready for this holiday season because, you know, ready to eat. I'm sure y'all ready to eat and all of those wonderful things. So today I am just coming to talk about a few things, uh, just share a few steps and some that I see beneficial as to getting to where you're going. Some things that have helped me, some things that I have recognized that have helped others as well. So these are going to be 10 steps to getting to where you're going. And I put them in a certain order because in this order, it kind of keeps you in the flow of things. But if you intend to utilize them and want to do them in your own order, that's fine too. If you do it that way, you probably realize that you probably need to do them in the order that I gave, but you know, we all learn and do it. Go with how you feel so you can learn whatever it is that you need to do for yourself. So first, we are the first step. The first step is to tap in. So this is about going within and, and recognizing where it is that you actually are headed, where it is that you actually want to go, you know, and also connecting more to yourself, to God, to spirit, to, to Jesus, whoever you connect to, whoever your higher power is, you know, to really just allow them to come and assist you so that you can recognize the vision it is that you, that you have for your life, the full vision. You know, it's always going to be changing, expanding, but at the same time, it's important for us to get clear. And that's one of the easiest ways to do so, right? Because when we tap in, this allows us to still our minds, still our thoughts and, you know, still S-T-I-L-L calm them down, you know, and get out of our own way. It allows us to clear the energy so what is within us can come up and we can see better, uh, feel better, move forward in a better way that is more feasible to where it is we're going, what works for our temperament and all of those wonderful things. So once you tap in, you <laughs> Y'all are going to hear Rashawn in the background, so forgive me ahead of time. So after you tap in, so before I go further, different ways to tap in. Meditate, breathing, what else? Praying, what else? You know, listening to music helps a lot as well because music takes us from one space into another. It kind of has the ability, well, it has the ability to transition our moods, right? So meditation, also don't get so caught up in the idea of meditation, meaning that you need to sit and be still, you know, and all those things. Meditation, more so than anything, is utilized to have us be present, right? So we can be meditating while we're walking, while we're getting ready for the morning, you know, just in our minds, being very focused on what it is that we're doing, taking our time, you know, even while we're eating, how, how much it is that we're chewing our food, are we rushing, are we even chewing our food, you know, all of those things, things that get us back into our body, into our present state of awareness, you know, and granted, most of the time, women need that stillness, sit down kind of meditation more than men do, because we are the emotional ones, you know, so when we're operating on our emotions, this can have us lost in a spew of thoughts that aren't really true, you know, so that stillness of meditation really serves us, not that it doesn't serve men, but most of the time, men who sit down and do a lot of meditation, they are the gurus. Now, and also, again, not saying that it's not good for them to do that because it is. So that's off topic. Anywho, so step two is to believe, right? So once you start tapping in and recognizing where it is you're going, 
what it is that you want to do all these different things are going to come up all these different stories are going to start coming to surface all these i can't or i should have did this or i won't be able to and all of those really stem from experiences and circumstances that we have been through previously and those things have simply stuck with us because we're caught in a story of that happening right so when we are caught in, in the story it it keeps us stagnant in that frequency of that story so granted the story is useful if you're utilizing it to share with someone or to um you know you know well, you talking to someone like, you know, well, I've been through X, Y, and Z and that kind of thing. But when you're constantly reliving these things and like, oh, I don't want to do that because this happened to me in the past. Whether it's about a relationship, whether it's, whether it's about a new job, you know, a business that you're building, um, you know, just anything really move that you need to make, all of that is is you you're gonna have to release those old stories that keep you stagnant that keep you in a space that does not serve where it is that you're headed that don't really even exist where it is that you're headed you know and because it, it also creates these false beliefs within us of again the i can't do this i won't be able to do this i don't have enough time i don't have enough room i don't have the tools that i need when in reality you always are at always have the starting point to where it is that you're attempting to go it's all in a matter of realizing that opening up to that so that you can open up to the possibilities that are there available to you so you can start that first step and move forward with that right so checking your false beliefs that's all in the the belief story number two so number three make a plan gotta write shit down want to make it real start writing things down get clear you know so once you figure this thing these, this out you know you have recognized these stories these false beliefs um your lack of faith your lack of trust then you begin to make a plan. And I say do these two things first because if you make a plan before you do this, then you're guaranteed to build on a foundation that is not solidified in, in a way that is going to keep you grounded to continue to be able to grow in what it is that you're doing. So these first two steps out of everything, they're going to take the longest, right? Because you're going to have to, it's all about the self-work going within, getting out of your own way kind of thing. So again, step three, make a plan, write it down, you know, get, get together step by step what it is that you need to do. I need to do this first. And then after I do that, I can do this and so on and so forth, you know? Yes, baby. One moment, no. Okay, yeah, so write it down step by step, you know, because when you're moving through something, building through something new, you want to go about this in a very practical manner, right? So that you're not skipping over anything, so that you're not missing anything, so that everything gets really panned out, handled the way that it needs to that way you can always have something to go back to so step number four is to then build a routine right because having a routine will help you place what it is that needs to be done in a specific space right so maybe you already have a routine and you just need to let go of one thing so that you can begin to allow yourself to add these new steps into your life so that you can start moving forward and start acting on what it is that you're doing what it is that you're trying to build trying to get to and all of those wonderful things so step five is to take the first step now it's time to start moving forward 
whatever you have listed on your plan, start doing that, start making that happen, put that effort in, take the time to really put your energy into where it is that you're going. Because if you don't put any energy into it, it's not that it won't happen, it won't happen. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it will because where your attention goes, where your energy goes, attention flows. Where your energy flows, attention goes, basically. All right. So the more energy that you put in it, into it, the more attention you're giving to it, the more of a fruition that you will receive back from your time invested. So the sixth step is to be consistent. You know, do something every day. It doesn't have to be a big, large, grand scale of a thing. You know, just take your time and do one thing every day. Do the same one thing every day if that's necessary. You know, you don't have to do multiple things every day. It doesn't have to look different every day. Consistency it's like practice basically. So you are refining and fine tuning yourself into really mastering who it is that you are coming into. You're now getting into this space of, or into the journey of your mastery, right? So the second, the seventh step is to be confident. Let me make sure it's seven, one, two, three four five six seven yes be confident in what it is that you're doing although you are just beginning there are so many different ways that you can build up your confidence in what it is that you're doing and one is continuing to do it every day granted some days you have to take a break you know you don't have to you I'm a firm believer in not overworking yourself so you won't get that advice for me to gr grind hard like that is redundant no matter how much work you put into something it you still really it doesn't even make it happen quicker you're still going to be getting back the same results right so say you do something on monday and then decide to do nothing on tuesday but then you do something wednesday thursday friday that one Tuesday offered you the rest that you needed in order to, or the break that you needed, that pause that you needed to kind of let things start coming together for you so that you can continue to put the energy in for yourself on that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? So be confident, be confident that you're going in the right place. Be confident that you, even if you don't fully know what you're doing right now, you will eventually it is doing it that is going to support you in really making that happen being confident in just yourself in general you know that you are making the right decisions for yourself the right choices for yourself that you are taking the right steps for yourself you know and because even if a step is turns into a missed one a misstep you can always come back to it and redo it again. Like it's okay to be set back. It's okay to come into the space of failure. I guess we would call it because nothing's really a failure. Like it, you are given the opportunity to learn a lesson to do it better. You know. So the eighth step is to practice patience. So patience is going to be a really big thing that you need as you're moving forward and doing something different because although we want things to turn out the next day, sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes it takes days, sometimes it takes months, sometimes it might even take a year. You know, you never know how long that it's actually going to take because there are so many factors in moving forward. There are everyday challenges that may come up you know some days we may not just be emotionally feeling like investing any energy into something there may even be god just saying not right now 
you know, okay, let me see you continue to put the work in, but the fruition is not happening right now. You know, it's almost like a, a building of the muscle of faith, of trust, you know, so now the ninth step is to ask for help when you need it. If you get in a place where you're feeling stuck, feel like you've done everything that you can do and you can't figure out a new way to do it, ask for help. Ask somebody, ask somebody who's been where you're going, ask somebody who is at the place that you're going, ask someone who just has a, a tool that can help reinforce where it is that you're going. You know, ask for help. Don't don't feel that asking for help means that you're incapable. You know, we are really at a time where, you know, we are going to come. We're here where we all need to be offering help and giving help, you know, and really supporting each other and being acceptance of support of others, you know, especially if they're like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. Don't reject it. That's a gift. That's a gift. Like, don't miss out on your blessings because you're stubborn out of wanting to do something by yourself because you're stubborn out of kind of needing that <laughs> maybe you're operating from a place of validation through accomplishment by your own self and of course there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but that's very stressful and very chaotic i mean it it may not feel that way as you're doing it but you'll begin to recognize through the manifestations in your life where it would have been better if you just would have asked for help, you know? So the last and final step, step 10 is, which I think is not the most important, but they're all important. Be open to change, right? Because sure, the vision may not change. It may expand. Granted, where you're going may not change either, but you may have to change the way in which you go about getting there. You may have to change the way in which you go about seeing the place that you're going because you may begin to recognize that you're operating from a space that is not actually going to serve you in getting to where you're going. So that is going to bring about the need to change the way that you are handling it, that you're doing something you know so consistently be open to change just you know be in the flow be part of the flow be of the flow so that you don't get caught in any type of stagnating energy that kind of deters you from the path that discourages you from it and also don't get discouraged when you have to change things having to change things doesn't mean that it's not going to happen it's just going to end up happening in a way that you wanted it to happen that you thought it was going to happen because maybe that's not the way that spirit sees it's best for you you know maybe you're going about it in a way that is just too difficult too hard you know when it could be a lot easier you know and you'll notice a lot as I am sharing things that I'm gonna always encourage you to not take the easy way out because it's never easy, but don't choose to stress yourself out. Like that's insanity. <laughs> that's insane to continue to want to make things hard for yourself when they don't have to be, you know, to almost want to be in this space it is it, it all comes from a space of ego and it's unconscious so we don't know it is that ego the space of ego that is unconscious that operates from an unconscious space so we don't recognize that we are operating from that space so i do also want to encourage you to have people around you who can be honest with you who can show you yourself when you are misstepping within where it is that you're headed where you're going you know in in the direction have someone there that you can trust that you can that's an ask for help you know have people there that you can trust to excuse me share your ideas with and 
that you can kind of go over what it is that you were doing, what you're trying to accomplish. That way, when you get into that space out of alignment, that they can be like, hey, you know, nudge you back over into your space in the fact or in the case that you're not seeing yourself. So you guys, I hope that this video is helpful for you. I hope that it supports you in moving forward. If you have any questions, just always feel free to ask and I will see you next video. Bye. All my love, so many blessings. Peace.